Hi folks, the topic of our last live workshop was making a uh, table saw slid and we didn't get it completely finished so rather than wait I thought we would do this video and finish it off. So we glued on this front fence and that's had plenty of time to sit. Now I'm going to I'm going to uh, reinforce it with some screws. I'm going to use number eight by, I think they're inch and three quarter. I'll tell you for sure. Actually, they're twos. So that'll give me inch and a quarter into the hardwood, which is plenty. Just want to avoid where the uh, saw blade is going to be, which is right about here. My dull pencil. Right about here. So I'll go uh, right here, and here, and here. Keep this one over here, keep this one over here. And about every three and a half, four inches. It's probably overkill, but make sure you countersink those heads so you don't end up scratching your table saw top. Okay, let me finish this off and then we'll just come back when we're putting the screws in. Okay. Now, remember this is going to get cut in half as soon as we use it. So, this piece on the back side, made out of pine, but it'll give us lots of support. Not critical that it be lined up in any particular way but I do want lots of glue on both surfaces center that uh, tape nine so right there now can put a couple of clamps on that blade is right there so I'll get either side I'm not bothering to put any in this way because it's almost inevitable it'll split the MDF Ok, 
Okay, take the clamps off. Now, neatness counts. I left saw marks on that bottom edge accidentally. So I'll just take my shoulder plane. One more. There, for what it took. I'm just gonna cut a quick chamfer on that bottom edge. Just in case you have to pick it up that way, it's, you're not grabbing that sharp edge. Now, actually I'm gonna do this over on the I'm going to put this in place. Now we'll put our piece of plywood on there that's going to should uh, run that over. So there's our blade. Put that in that same spot. And I'll bring that just up off the bottom a little bit. I'm just gonna, uh, what should we do? Just so that it's not resting on the bottom and creating any drag. There's my blade. Just put a mark right there. So I'll route this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, down to here on that edge and down to there on that edge. That same little quarter round, uh, not quarter round, chamfer bit, just enough to take that sharp, uh, our sharpness off. Can we handle two inch? Not on that. Go with inch and a half. Now, I didn't want this too big because then it gets in the way when you're trying to hold small pieces. But it has to be tall enough and stable. That's why plywood, not a piece of solid wood to hold everything together. So you're, you'll end up having just this piece and that strip up above the height of the blade over back there that's tying the whole thing together. I need to grab a couple of clamps.
Best glue spreader there is. measure that and get it centered. Eleven, so five and a half. And just eyeball that. Well, if we stay short, actually better not. I don't want to end up blowing through. All right, give me a minute. I'm just going to go in, adjust this so it's not so deep, and then we'll put uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws on there to hold it. Okay, now I'm going to give that a little bit of time to dry and then the next thing we need to do is go in and adjust with a scraper, I'll show you how to do that, those runners so that there's no drag. We don't want any slop but we don't want any drag. And I'll show you what I mean. Just a couple of places where it catches but they'll actually show marks on the runners and we can go in there with a the scraper and just fine tune that so that slides nicely 
doing any resistance at all. It just makes it too awkward when you're having to push against that resistance. And then it finally you push hard enough that it lets go and you're zipping through your piece and you may cause a little bit of tear out. All right, give that, uh, we'll give that 20 minutes to set up and then we'll go ahead and finish this off. All right, I'm just gonna use a chisel as a scraper. Now I've got some glue to get rid of. If you're wondering what those big burn marks and you didn't see the rest of the episode, I hadn't given the uh, glue enough time to dry and these rails came off or came loose so we had to screw them in from the other side and I wanted to make sure I had lots of screw in the wood so I came all the way through with a longer than needed screw and we just used the angle grinder to flush it off not pretty but if I can think of something to do with them I will Okay, so I'm going to take the handle off of this. One of the advantages of these IBC chisels. This is the back. Put that in place and just run it back and forth. It's not bad, it just sticks in a few spots. So we flip that over. Probably good that I used that Osage Orange because it stands out really good. You can see marks like that. Now that's actually a sob burn. Get some more glue over here to get rid of. Now every time you take a little bit off, it's going to affect or may affect how tight it is on the other one. So before I do that one, I'm gonna put it back in place. So when I push that through, it just gets sticky right there. Don't see any, oh well, yeah, a little bit right there. You see what I'm talking about, that little dark mark? Just because this one is fairly big, I'm gonna go in here and take a little bit of it off. Still sticky right there at the end. Tight, no, no side to side slop. A little bit right there. A little glue. A little bit right there.
I see red there and I'm just wondering if that throat plate is a little bit high. Obviously it has to be in order for it to be picking up paint. Now I'm going to grab my plane and just knock those sharp corners off. And then we'll also wax the bottom and that, that may solve it. going to use a paste wax you know, I'll just rub this all over the bottom just happened to come out of the can like this it normally is more of a paste but it's maybe a bit dried out the other thing I'm going to do too is I'm going to cut that little chamfer all the way around too just so you don't have those sharp corners that get beat up real easy. And to make it easier to handle, I cut, I had a, just a finger hole in the last one and it made it a lot easier to carry. Now, once I get this on, I've got to buff it off or else it'll get sticky. But I want to get right in these side of these rails. And those black marks really bother me, but I suppose I could take a belt sand to them. I don't want to risk taking a plane hitting the end of that screw. All right, let me buff this off and we'll pick it up there. Okay, that's clean enough. When the rag starts to slide easy, then you know you've got the excess material off. Okay, no more need to be done. No slop, slides easy, doesn't, that's good, perfect. Okay, now let's go in and just do the finishing touches on this. Uh, I want a grab hole right about there. I'll set that up, let's, we're gonna cut through it first. I hope I knew where those screws were. So if you take the time and build that accurately, It'll pay you back every time you use it. I 
Like I said, this is just to protect those otherwise sharp corners. I need some power. I'll do the top side as well. Now we need about a two inch Okay, you get the balance point right about here Now that's heavy enough I will uh, Clamp that in place. Is that line up, Jake? There. This makes such a mess. I got another clamp there. You may as well use it. Comfort.
Andy. Okay, there you have it. Crosscut sled. Serve you for a long time. And when it does get beat up, you're not out a lot of materials to go make another one. Hope you enjoyed this. See you in the shop soon.